So, would you like to paint or would you like me to paint? Sometimes painting wildlife literally means painting wildlife. These fur dyed numbers may not qualify as art, but they sure contribute to the art of wildlife conservation. They're part of a project conducted by the Arizona Game and Fish Department to reestablish colonies of black tailed prairie dogs in southeastern Arizona. There's been a lot of conflict. Historically, there's always been a lot of conflict between prairie dogs and the ranching community. Many ranchers see the prairie dog as a pest that competes with cows for forage, a rodent whose burrows are injury hazards to horses and livestock. In the early 1900s, a government campaign to exterminate these chubby little rodents decimated populations across their range of central North America. Arizona was the only state to completely wipe them out. They were mostly extirpated by the 1920s and 30s, but the last one was seen in 1961 in Arizona. In 2008, Arizona Game and Fish began re-establishing colonies of black-tailed prairie dogs at the Las Cienegas National Conservation Area southeast of Tucson. On land managed by the BLM, the department built starter burrows and let the prairie dogs expand from there. We did another one in 2009 and a third colony in 2010. As of 2014, there were about 50 black-tailed prairie dogs in each of the colonies. They live in what's called a family group, so what they call a coterie. They are extremely communicative. They call it a bark, which is where they get their prairie dog name from. Um, I think it kind of sounds more like a chirp. And blacktails are also unique because they do what's called a jump yip, where they kind of throw their arms up and they do this woo! And it's kind of, yeah, an indication to everyone throughout the colony, it's okay, it's all clear, you can kind of relax. So let's make that one 22, because that one was 23. Every month, biologists and volunteers check on the colonies. Those numbers they paint on the prairie dogs help them identify them from a distance. But twice a year, they trap the prairie dogs to get a closer look. All right, so we just need to pick everything up and head back down. So the end of this is the perfect size to fit around the end of the cage. Now you have a very secure prairie dog. He can't bite you very easily in this contraption, so it's a fantastic thing. They take all sorts of measurements. So first we will take a weight. 0.85. And I need somebody to record some data for me. And then when I do the tail, I go underneath. And then we're going from the very edge of the heel all the way out to that middle digit. And for total length, we're just adding the body length and tail, right? Correct. Okay. With this spring assessment, we're gonna be looking at a lot of the breeding factors. We wanna see how many females are actually you know, lactating and showing evidence that they have pups below ground. And we'll be collecting fleas off of them. Because of the plague threat, we have been proactively dusting these colonies with an insecticide each year. And there's been some concern lately whether or not the fleas are building up a resistance to this insecticide. This work benefits the entire ecosystem because prairie dogs are a keystone species, a critical part of this grassland habitat. Oh yeah, they play a vital role in the ecosystem. They say that, you know, the keystone role is something where once you take that animal out of the system, the system will change in its absence. You know, one of the big things that ranchers in the south are dealing with is mesquite invasion in a lot of their grasslands. And as I mentioned, prairie dogs love that clear, open surrounding. And all three of our colonies, when we, we cleared all the mesquite out to begin with, and the prairie dogs are keeping that mesquite down. They don't want that in their way. They don't want that blocking their view. The digging and grass clipping they do produces soil rich in nutrients. Their burrows help rainwater soak into underground aquifers. They also make great homes for other wildlife. We have a lot of different reptiles and insects. There's burrowing owls, badgers will live down there. Prairie dogs are also an important prey species for a variety of animals, including the endangered black-footed ferret. So when you take out an animal that, that does so much, then yeah, you're, you do screw things up. Before these prairie dogs are returned to their burrows, they get a brand new paint job. It may not be museum quality, but it's definitely a masterpiece of wildlife conservation.